Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. What could be one reason why certain countries would uh, not work with the United States of America, would not like to uh, uh, tangle with the United States of America, would not like to be part of an alliance or a group, or um, you know, even you know, friends with the United States of America? Why do you think it's so? Well. The uh, short answer is because they probably are bad countries, because by definition, we are a good country. So if another country does not want to be part of our world, that means they must be by definition bad, because you can't ignore good. You want to be part of good unless you're bad. All right. So this is the 13 year old uh, explanation of this. You don't want to work with us. You don't want to be part of our uh, uh, alliance, the word is alliance, or partner, that means you're bad. Well, maybe the, uh, setting this aside, maybe the real reason is uh, because this country of good smacks everybody around if they don't follow the orders. Could that be? I don't know. Let's look into it a little bit. Because we have here a country that is uh, NATO member is part of the European Union, which is a democratic, uh, you know what I mean? Democratic love, loves freedom, has the same values as the United States of America, is the weasel of United States of America, and has all the, you know, boxes checked. But the problem is Hungary, in uh, <clears throat> the past few years, really wants to um, say what it feels and uh, you know, what it sees around and doesn't really like a lot of things about this you know, alliance and uh, boss. Therefore, it must be punished. In this case, we have Hungary and Orban is the prime minister, Viktor Orban, the prime minister of the brave country of Hungary. I have to say it, even though I'm by birth Romanian. So my Romanian and Hungarian friends know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, they're courageous, they have balls, definitely. Romania has balls, what's that? Anyway, so let's see what this article tells us about the sanctions that the good guy impose on the bad guy. Good guy, United States leadership, bad guy, Orban. Can you believe that? I can. What comes after sanctions? Do you know? Can you look at uh, other examples? What's next? So. This article comes from uh, European Pravda and it says US targets Orban's, Orban with sanctions. What's next? <laughs> What's next? Uh, I don't know, February 2014, Ukraine or so? A spontaneous uh, uprising, not uprising, protest that's going to turn into we want you out, otherwise you're this and that. On the evening of April 12, the team of Viktor Orban and the Prime Minister himself, presumably, breath, breathed, breathed, breathed a sign, a relief when they learned about the US government's decision. The Hungarian capital expected much more serious punishment from Washington. Um, let's say you are in a relationship. Who can or in, a, in what kind of relationship can you be if someone can punish you, but you can't really punish them? Is it a, a relationship where it is based on power and influence? That means that the other, the other side is stronger than you are and has the ability to hurt you. And uh, that is not in a partner like, uh, you know what I mean? It's like a, more like a parent uh, telling the child what to do and there will be negative consequences if you don't do what the I'm telling you what to do. Or it could be a tyrant telling one of his subjects that steps out of line, I'm going to, if you do not do what I'm telling you, and I'm going to start with this. First, I'm going to just uh, raise part of your family, and then the next is going to be the next move, and then you're going to get over there, and I'm going to take care of you. How about that? It used to happen in um, history. Anyway, let's go back to this little thing here. Punishment from the Washington, the big daddy, and the U.S. ambassador to Hungary, David Pressman, did everything possible to make such expectations possible. Okay, who's this 
David Pressman. I will discuss it. I have two more here, uh, little things to open, and I will discuss who David Pressman is and what's the relationship between him and Orban. The Orban team understands that their actions have long deserved an even tougher attitude towards themselves. Can you hear this? So the, the children of Orban uh, and Orban himself understands that he was a bad boy and he deserves the punishment long deserved. So it's, it was, it's way past due. An even tougher attitude towards themselves. That means uh, not only your half of your family, maybe the entire family. However, according to an article from Dmitro Tuzansky, the director of the Institute of Central European Strategy, hardly anyone thinks this is the end of the story. Correct. I know it's not the end of the story. And the end of the story will, will be when uh, Budapest, when Hungary comes back in line, puts its hands down, moves its hands back and forth and don't, doesn't say a, a word. Okay? Because it can't. So, that's where they need to come. And they will do everything to accomplish that but they will start slowly all right blackmail actually threats blackmail a little spontaneous regime change and maybe something else all right but on this time they start with sanctions okay if you don't do that because i can and i'm telling you what to do and you don't tell me what to do all right so uh, all right let's say here Information that the U.S. may and plan to impose sanctions against Hungary was reported by sources of pro-Western Hungarian media when the Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Giarto, very, very intelligent guy, and I like him a lot, had already scheduled a week. And these plans were very specific. Now, this is how these guys are going to smear Giarto. They will interpret his actions in their own way. And that's their right, but also our right is to point it out that I think that's really, really uh, unrealistic. Um, but let's go. Giardo devoted this week to friendship with an aggressor state or its friends. On Remember, friendship. He went over there to Moscow and signed some deal, energy agreements that will provide his people his nation, that he actually, uh, that's all he should care, that was his, his position, to care about his people, not Brussels or Washington, for to have cheaper energy agreements with the, another state that is involved in a fight with another state. And somehow he, Giarto and Hungary, have to follow what the United States tell them to do regarding that state that they have nothing to do with Hungary. On the contrary, that state that is the victim has territories that Hungary <coughs> might claim one day, like Poland as well. On the Tuesday after Easter, he flew to Moscow to sign new energy ag agreements. Ah, uh, well, he did that for his country. What are you going to do? On Wednesday, the day when sanctions were announced, he returned to participate in the Belarusian Hungarian Intergovernmental Commission with Sergei Alei. Aleinikov, Aleinikov, the chief diplomat of self-proclaimed President Lukashenko. Well, is this full of hatred or what? Which is okay, they can have it, that's fine. But if they can have it, then everybody else can have it. No, otherwise it will be unjust. Now, when the Russian Federation is waging an aggressive war backed by Belarus, the largest euro, blah, 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 blah such a schedule would suit Iranian officials rather than a minister of a EU and NATO member state. Now, they jump to Iran from here. And exactly this. Hungarian government also had excellent relations with Iran. They should not because the United States said so. Because they're the good people and Iran is the bad people. And Russia and Belarus. And soon China and India and Brazil. And the list goes on. In November 2022, Peter Giarto even received the Iran. Even. Can you believe that? The Iranian Minister of Economy in Budapest. Oh my God, isn't he a war criminal or what is he? A war criminal, social criminal, human being criminal, what is he? However, there is no connection between Giarto's recent meetings and the imposing sanctions. Oh, that's about to come. Okay, the US decision is rather the result of a cumulative effect. So they held it back 
And now they say, you know what? We gotta intervene, enough children. Go and clean your room. Gigi, you go in your room. Mikey, you go in the other room. Clean your uh, rooms, uh, change your underwear, and then uh, come and see me in 30 minutes. The current US sanctions are similar to those Washington introduced in 2014 against six Hungarian citizens, banning them from entering the country due to corruption. All right, so that's the way it is, huh? Now, here it is. Another similarity is that, like then, the current US sanctions are a signal. You do what I tell you, or I'm gonna take care of half of the rest of your family that I allowed, I allowed to be breathing. In 2014, it was a hello to the Hungarian government from the Obama administration, with Joe Biden as vice president and in charge of European policy. Holy moly. Now, in 2023, it comes from the administration of President Biden. But there is a crush, crucial difference between the US actions in 2014 and 2023. Correct. If nine years ago, the Washington's decision, Viktor Orban launched anti-American accusations and speculation immediately burning bridges uh, to strengthen his power. So he said, you know what, these guys are bad uh, that, and everybody's going to believe me because I said so. Now it seems that the Budapest wants to use all the chances to avoid worsening the situation. Yeah, by meeting... Uh, uh, the guys in Moscow, and then the Belarusians, and then the Iranians. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they try. All right, so right here is, let's go to, I know it's another thing here where they, all right, the sanctions imposed at this stage have no, not caused real financial damage. Okay, here is the uh, funny thing that uh, Orban jokes and not jokes, but the Americans and everybody else, since they are just, uh, frustrated uh, children or teenagers, they don't get it. However, it seems like it's just starting. In his address to the nation in February, Viktor Orban juggled the surname of the current ambassador to Hungary again, saying Pressman, that's his last name, comes from press, meaning pressure. And they should not send anyone with the surname Puccini, you know, <laughs> the Italian composer, from the word Pucci to Hungary. I think that was funny and uh, very real. And believe me, when he said pressman from press, he was referring to uh, also the mass media and other things, not only pressure, but pressure comes from mass media. So let's see who this guy is. Um, uh, oh, let me see here. Last week, the Hungarian Radio Liberty and the Guardian wrote, weasels right here, wrote that a group of congressmen, congressmen from Republican and Democratic parties of the USA is preparing a bill on sanctions against leading Hungarian political figures associated with Viktor Orban's government. Okay, you got it? And this is much more serious than the little-known Hungarian diplomat, diplomat. So let's see who Mr. Pressman is. Here he is, US Embassy in Hungary. Here he is, sworn in, blah, blah, blah. The only thing I want to point out, I just looked over here, he did this. Ambassador Pressman previously served at the White House at the White House as director for war crimes and atrocities on the National Security Council and at the Department of State as an aide to Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Madeleine Albright, please watch that uh, interview, 60-minute interview or part of it where she says that uh, uh, when she was asked if she thinks that uh, the sanctions imposed in uh, on Iraq that caused allegedly caused the death of about 500,000 Iraqi children was worth it. She said that she thinks it was worth it. So that's the Secretary of State of the United States that was revered as a... Mm, and she is somehow related, I think, with Pellman, uh, Pellman uh, Pressman in a certain way. So let's go to the second article that I have here uh, to, to see his bio a little bit deeper. Pressman. David, born in 1977. All right, here you have it. Pa, 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 biography, is born in 77. He grew up in California. All right, his parents were both lawyers. Good. One of them, a judge. The family is Jewish in roots in Eastern Europe. Pressman receives his Bachelor's of Arts from Brown University, 1999. He worked briefly in communication, Clinton administration, then Madeleine Albright right here. And then he, was, he, he got his Juris Doctor from New York University School of Law in 2000, 2004. All right, so and then he's got, uh, he accompanied John, uh, George Clooney. That's fantastic. They match. So anyway, this is Mr. Pressman and that's Mr. Orban. And Mr. Orban and Mr. Giarto 
will have problems because they uh, don't want to follow orders. And uh, what's going to come next? The article asked right in the title. Well, the next will after that, they usually uh, do a little uh, spontaneous protest that would last as long as the government is still in power. And when the protesters will uh, turn violent and the state has to ensure the security of the rest of the citizens, the government of Hungary will be uh, accused of uh, you know, uh, infringing human rights and doing this and uh, committing abuse against the peace, mostly peaceful protesters, if you know what I mean. So, and then after that, Orban is going to be sanctioned with this, so Hungary will do this, and, and then it's going to be, um, they call it isolated. But, you know, isolated from, from 40 countries that will follow lead, you know, or follow the lead of the United States of America by, you got to sanction the dog. They, they don't even have to tell them. I sanction uh, uh, Hungary. Everybody else, me too, me too, me too. Like in the meetings that maybe you have where you work, we have... Uh, Brown, brown nosers around and when the boss says something everybody says yes yeah that's an excellent idea boss yeah i couldn't have said it better myself it's fantastic you know like a minute ago outside that door there's the, the outside this uh, room you were telling me that that sucks and why you say that yes they do because that's how they are that's how they are so they will be imposed and try to uh, impose uh, sanctions and isolate hungary i have to remind you that the world uh, has about 193, sometimes 194 countries. Out of those, about 40 are under US grip. So, but that's the world community that matters. The rest are just, uh... but hey, we love everybody. We like inclusion if they follow our orders, okay? We like diversity, of course, not diversity of thought. <laughs> diversity of, I don't know, looks, <laughs> that's about it. And then we like equity, not. Why? <laughs> if they would be equitable, then you wouldn't have a boss. We all be bosses and equal. <laughs> you know? Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.